Welcome to Steve McDonald's Crafting and today what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be finally unpacking my Cricut and seeing if I can get it going because I want to cut some vinyl names for everybody that very kindly bought me a coffee when I was saving up for my pressure pot for, that, I, that I'm going to be using on my other channel. So this Cricut is quite a nice size and apparently it's very very useful and I've got the Cricut Maker but there are quite a few different Cricuts out there and the reason I got the Cricut Maker is it, I think it's the one that does everything that I will need it to do but I've been waiting for quite a while before I unpack it and use it for several reasons really. Firstly because, actually, I, w I just haven't had the time. Oh, it does look nice, doesn't it? I just haven't had the time to look at it and to learn how to use it. And secondly, because, actually, I'm a bit nervous about using it because I've got to learn a whole new program, which is Design Space and everything else. So I've got Design Space downloaded. Now I have purchased the monthly subscription. For me that makes more sense to do because I feel that I need to have the monthly subscription to get the most out of it. And I have bought a few accessories as well that go with it. What I'm going to do today is show you quickly what I'm going to do. Oh, look, there's a lovely Cricut pen. I've got quite a few of those somewhere. Cricut tools. Now, I have got a box of Cricut tools here. And bits and pieces. And vinyls. And different ends. I've got a knife there. Lots of different pens. Lots of different vinyls. And I want to cut out everybody's name that I know who purchased me pressure pot so it stays there forever really that's where the pens goes there I've also got a fine point blade an engraving tip a double scoring tip wheel cutting wheel and the knife blade so I'm going to put it together all I need to do is connect it to the mains and then also connect it to my laptop to ensure that I've got everything sorted out and ready to use Design Space. I've not used it before, so I don't know how difficult that's going to be. So I've loaded up Design Space, and as you can see, it says, Welcome Steve, a new project. So now all I need to do is work out what I have to do. So I'm assuming I just click New Project. And now that's come up like that. Now I have no idea what I need to do. So the first thing I'm going to add is thank you. Oh, what? Uh, you see, thank, I must have pushed something that I didn't want to do. So thank you for buying me. Oh, that's about buying wrong. Buying me. Coffees So I've got all my names typed in now or part some of them typed in now that I want to print and I just typed them in a text text box used it like word and changed the font I've kind of put them all in some sort of order to try and keep them attached to each other and now I have to apparently I have to weld them so I'm going to hit weld I have no idea if this is going to work out weld because when I go to make it it does tell me it's a big project but it also tells me firstly it's hard to see the writing on the black background which is just ridiculous because I have no idea how to change this this is not a simple thing to use I'm sure all the people out there are saying, oh, of course it is, it's so simple. And I'm not sure if it's coming out the right way or not, to be honest. But the names are there. Now, basic material, I'm using vinyl. 
So pressure default, yeah. No tool required in clamp A, that's fine. Load fine blade in clamp B. So I'm not sure what blade I've got in there. Well, that's the fine blade. So it's telling me to load my mat, which I've done, and I'm putting this on a bit of fast forward, and I've pushed the start button. And to be honest, I, I'm fascinated by it. I keep looking at it. I look, I look like a chicken. And like a chicken pecking at the corn there. But I really am fascinated by it. But what I am surprised about is initially how quick and neat it is cutting this. Although I do realize that I chose a font that was perhaps a bit too complex, as you can see. And also, I am printed it out in size 20 to start with. And this just is never going to work. But there we go. I didn't know that at this time. And it's another one of those frustrating things that I learn. But I am a kinesthetic learner, definitely. And I learn by doing. So I did read that you need to burnish this or brush up, rub hard on it. <laughs> what I didn't realise was... <laughs> While I was doing this, I was doing it so hard, I was pulling half the letters out. So all these white spaces are where letters should be, and actually, um, it was never going to work. But I've not made that decision yet. I think I'm coming to the realisation now, and there were a few bad words said. But never one to give up. I think to myself, no, maybe I'm not doing it right, so I have another little look. I think that's where I said a bad word. And I think, no, I'm going to still carry on doing it. But I was frustrated. I so wanted to open the studio door and throw this cricket maker out of the door. But so I carry on burnishing the bottom bit because I think the bit that says thank you for buying me coffees is actually going to be fine because I did that in a larger font. But I'm still a bit disappointed. <laughs> this is like, I'm definitely swearing here. There is no doubt about it. So... The frustration is real, believe me, and I'm I'm quite a patient person, but I want to run much quicker than I would be able to walk or crawl. So I take it off the map here and I decide, yeah, the only bit that I'm going to be able to keep is that bottom bit. So I get my wonderful Cricut scissors and they are very, very sharp. They're really nice scissors to use. They feel great in hand. And I'm not sponsored by Cricket in any way. I don't think they'd ever sponsor me how bad I am at using this. So I cut it off and I think to myself, yeah, I'm going to weed this out and I'm going to use this thank you for buying me a coffee on my pressure pot. So what I do is I give it a quick burnish onto the mat and apparently I've heard by, uh, and I've seen on quite a few videos as well, I think it's Maker's going to make where you should weed on the mat. So that is what I'm doing, I'm weeding on the mat. And then I noticed that there's parts of this vinyl that haven't got anything printed out on them. So I'm not wasting that because I'm very frugal, never one to waste any vinyl or anything. And I think I can use that again. But that bit I put there thinking, yeah, I might use that. And then I think, ah, nah, that's going in the bin. Yeah, it's dry, but I can't look at it anymore. It's got to go in the bin. So I take my little weeding pen here and I start to weed. Then I realise that actually maybe I should take the big bits of foil away, uh, not foil, vinyl away first and then weed, which is what I then end up doing, which made it much easier, I have to say. Getting rid of the bulk of it really did make it easier to do. Look how much I'm concentrating there. My goodness me. So here we go. Just pulling that off now. And that just made me feel like I'd, I'd, I'd actually achieved something as well because it left behind what I was actually looking for. Even though I end up putting this on the pressure pot, I don't actually end up using this. I do scrape it all off again because I felt it was just too dark and you couldn't really see the thank you. And it was all about thanking people. So I'm gently pulling it back. And what I've also learned now is keep it at a very low angle and pull it and it actually pulls off much easier. And it doesn't pull up some of the letters. And I think this is the size, I think this was a 45, size 45 font that I did here. But look at me, I'm muttering away to myself there and probably wasn't very friendly. <laughs> So removing that bit, and look what I achieved, yay! Thank you for the coffees, it worked. And now I just carry on 
weeding this, as the technical term is, or picking the bits out. And I put the bits that I use on my little scraper, which is also a mistake. I've since learned now that you actually put it onto something else that's sticky or a special little tool because it took me a while to pick these bits off that scraper. But we live and learn. So I'm just going through, weeding out the little bits. And this little pin tool or this pin pen or whatever it's called works really, really well. And it's brilliant. I am so pleased with it. It worked much nicer for these little intricate bits than the actual weeder that you get with the Cricut. I will link everything that I've used below as well so that you can uh, get it if you want to get one. <laughs> if you ever think that you're going to get one after watching me with this, then I'll be surprised. So once this is done, I then get my transfer paper cut off a bit. And I didn't realise as well that once you use the transfer paper, you can reuse it several times. At this point in the game, I was using it once and I just threw it away, which was a shame because, again, I don't like waste. So I just cut a bit off that I need and make sure that it's the right size there and then pop the transfer paper onto the cutout letters. But now what I do is I collect, I save the backing from the transfer paper and then I put the transfer paper back on the backing and I reuse it again. I sound like I, I've been doing this for a long time. Honestly, I have only been doing this a couple of weeks and I still am really struggling with it, but I am getting better, I have to say. I used my little tool and this is when I realized that was a silly thing to do was put those bits onto that tool because now it's not gonna give me a smooth, smooth brush down. So I run over this a few times before I attempt to uh, take the paper off and take the images off stuck to the transfer tape. And I'm doing this quite carefully this time. And I think what would have been better is when I did the smaller ones, rather than burnish it or whatever it's called, straight over the vinyl, if I'd have put the cover that comes with the mat over it and then gone over it. I think that would have worked a lot easier and it wouldn't have scraped them up as much. So this is the pressure pot that I want to put everything on, which everybody that bought me a coffee during the particular months, I think it was November till January, contributed to and allowed me to buy. I'm measuring it up here just to say where, say where I want it. And it is too wide, so it's easy to cut through. And there we go, it fits on there nicely. And it looks great against that white background of the actual vinyl itself. But it's not, you can't see it enough. But there we go. I won't be using dark again on a dark background, which seems quite common sense, really. So evidently, I'm lost on common sense. But at this point, I don't think I was thinking straight anyway, because I had become quite frustrated and I'd been spent, I'd actually spent about six hours already figuring this out. And I think that just goes to show that before you try and do something, sometimes it is better to watch the videos or do some research rather than just try and dive straight in and do it kinesthetically. But there we go. That's me, I'm afraid. And there is a famous YouTuber that also works like this and that's Jazza. And if you haven't seen Jazz's channel, which I'm sure everyone must have done because he's got over 5 million subscribers, uh, he talks about that type of approach to learning as well. So I gently pull that off, pop this uh, onto the pressure part, and it isn't really, really sticky, this transfer tape. It, it, I was surprised, considering how it isn't sticky, how well it worked on this transfer to the pressure pot. I then rub over it, and then I slowly, which the lighting isn't brilliant here, slowly pull it off and it does leave behind a great image that I wanted. And I didn't have to mirror it or anything like that. Apparently that is just for the, well not just for, but that you do that when you want to use iron on and things like that. So I pull this off slowly and you will see that it starts to reveal I think I'm encouraging it here, as you can see me muttering to it. I'm probably saying, please don't come off, please don't come off, please don't come off. It was more difficult to get off than I thought it would have been. And also, when I did take it off, it demonstrates that actually it does stick quite well. And I think if I'd have left it on there for a few more days, it would have been really difficult to get off. I'm almost ecstatic at this point, I think, but it's worked. And there we go, there's the second bit. Just lining that up underneath there to ensure that that's in the right place and going through the same motions 
here as I did before and checking that it's all fitting on there nicely. Now I do show a project at the end of this that I did the next day that actually demonstrates that I did learn quite a bit and I'm definitely going to improve and I'm going to, I'm sure, enjoy using this Cricut. I just need to be a little bit more informed and understand how to use design space and the machine a little bit more, I think. So there we go, that's on there nicely now. But like I said, you can't really see it very well. So I bring a light down to show you that it says, thank you for the copies. And I was quite pleased with that. I was quite pleased with the, te the style of the text. Not so necessarily pleased about the spacing. I wish I'd spaced it out a little bit better, but I wasn't thinking straight. So I had to do all the letters again, and I did them in two different colors. But this time I chose a size 30 font and I put them through twice to cut through and I was told by my mate Carolyn in America Don't take your mat out. Just push the button to allow to recut and it will cut in exactly the same positions again And it did and this is with all the names on and what it looks like Really finished and I, I have to say I love it So I couldn't get all the names on the outside. So what I've done is there is a thing in the inside. And I put everybody's names that I couldn't fit on the outside onto the inside. And I think they've come out really, really well. I cannot say how much I appreciate everybody that's bought me a coffee to save up for this pressure pot. It really has made a big difference because I couldn't have afforded it on my own. I'm now saving up for a 3D printer. So uh, that's what all my buy me a coffees are going towards at the moment and I'm about halfway there. So regarding the cricket, oh my God, it was frustrating. But I have put it all away now. And in the end, I really did enjoy it. It was frustrating, but that's because it's a steep learning curve. I think once I learn a little bit more on how to use it and how to get everything set up and going, I think I'll be well away. So hopefully my next video on it will be a little bit more, let's say, abled. <laughs> I'll be a little bit more able on it. And I, maybe I can produce something that's really beautiful. So this is the project that I did virtually about an hour later. I did learn how to use the print and cut and did my logo. And I just used a laser printer with the sticker paper that comes that you can print on and it turns into a sticker. And I had to do this on four different mats and I measured it all up. This is about 12, 15 inches in diameter and I love how it's come out. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I look forward to hearing from you. I hope you've enjoyed your craft and I hope you enjoyed my little escapades with using my Cricut. I am 100% sure I will get better and I will upload some videos of me doing some useful stuff on it as well. Take care, enjoy your crafting, bye.